Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about investment and specifically investing in property versus investing in the stock market. I personally have invested in both property and the stock market and I believe that investing in the stock market is a much better use of your time. In this video we're going to be particularly looking at the case of the most successful investor of all time, Mr Warren Buffett, and see what he's done. Uh, Warren Buffett has avoided the housing market um, he, believe it or not, he never invests in real estate. He has, of course, bought property. He bought a house that he lives in in 1958 in Omaha, Nebraska, um, for the equivalent of $285,000, where he's lived since. But the natural question that arises from this is, why has the most successful investor in history not been investing in real estate? Um, real estate is supposedly a safe investment out there, so why does he avoid it? Does Warren Buffett know something that we don't know? We'll, of course, be look, examining all these questions and many more. Of course, sub subscribe to the channel, um, show your support. You can criticise Warren Buffett's investment strategy as much as you like, but that's not going to change the fact that his strategy has led him to outperform the S&P 500 by 84% over the last 20 years, and that's made him the most successful investor of all time, without a doubt. He's been in the stock market for a very long time, and this has continuously made him successful investments. Um, he's, of course, been asked about what he thinks about buying a house, and his response has been very, very simple and straightforward. He says you can buy a house if you know that you're going to stay in one area for a long period of time. He said that a 30-year mortgage is a very useful and the best instrument in the world. So if it's such a great investment, why does he avoid real estate, particularly when the housing market has crashed, back as it did in 2008? Buffett had a huge amount of cash then, and he knew that the housing market would, at some point, go back up. So why didn't he invest in real estate at this point? There are, of course, many reasons for this. So if we start with the first one, um, investing in real estate is not like investing in the stock market. Uh, managing a property is a full-time business. And maybe if you just have one property, it's not a big deal. And it's, if it's just a side hustle. But the moment it turns into multiple properties, it becomes a full-time business. Um, if, just because you have a property doesn't mean you'll always be able to rent it out. Uh, you still have to keep making your mortgage payments. And secondly, property always breaks down. There's always something that needs to be taken care of. There's always maintenance. And during a crisis, you might not be able to rent it out for a long period of time. And uh, so that does, of course, this of course doesn't mean that property is a bad is a, is a bad business, but it just means that it is a business, which means that you have to spend a significant amount of time actually managing it. So this is why Buffett didn't go into real estate because he knows that his time is valuable, and the time he spends on real estate means that he has less time to look for other investments in the market. So Buffett has, in, of course, invested in some estate, real estate throughout his career, but he's mostly done that through REITs over the year. And he owns a large stake in Store Capital Corp, which is a large publicly traded American real estate investment trust. So an investment fund that invests in real estate. So investing in them is actually like investing in stocks. So, and the second reason why Buffett avoids real estate is because of how extremely difficult it is to find a great deal in the market. The way you actually make an investment is that you find a great business that's inaccurately priced. So it's priced lower um, than it actually costs for one reason or another. It could be that the, the business has a perfect foundation and that can easily scale off, or it's developed a technology that might bring in massive profits in the future once it's produced at high levels. Uh, the stock market is full with inaccurately priced stocks, especially during a crisis. You can find some real value. When people start panicking and selling off, the sell-off actually leads to prices crashing. Interest rate hikes scale for investors, for example, and then they start massively selling off their stocks. The, look at the example of Apple, for example. It fell about 25% from April to June 2022. But that doesn't mean that Apple, for example, lost a quarter of its workforce in a few months. The sales didn't drop 25% in a few months. No, of course it didn't mean that. It was the panic that drove the market down. So then even great businesses like Apple suffered. So that's why it's, very, it's actually easy for you guys to find a great deal in the stock market that is in real estate. And prices in real estate don't fluctuate that fast. You'll have some real estate crashes that happen once or twice every few decades. But 
if there's a great deal in the market, a local real estate agent in the area will most likely pick up on that deal and close it before everyone else finds out about it. So you don't have the same real estate exchange that you do for stocks where you can go through, do your analysis from the comfort of your home and find some really, really good deals. Um, and unlike real estate, companies have to go through a large and lengthy process to be able to get themselves listed on the stock market. They have to publish their financial statements every quarter, which makes it possible for you as an investor and Warren Buffett to have a competitive advantage when finding deals in the market because you can do all the analysis yourself. Um, real estate doesn't produce as much. It provides you a roof over your head, of course, and that's really it. But in terms of actually making that big money, it is not the same as it would be when you look at stock because a business can scale up its operations and grow indefinitely. Uh, Buffett, for example, acquired 5% of Apple in 2018 for $36 billion. And in a couple of years, when Apple crossed the $3 trillion market, his stake grew to $160 billion. And he's also enjoyed regular dividends from Apple. Um, he's been averaging about one, uh, 775 million annually just in dividends. And there's no way he really could have pulled that off if he was just investing in real estate. And that's not even his best deal. Um, if you look at what he paid for C's Candy Company in 1972, he invested 25 million and it's returned him $1.35 billion. To, so you can just see from these numbers what kind of money we're dealing with here. So this has been a very, very lucrative deal for Buffett and an extraordinary return on his investment. And the third reason is that there's just more money in the stock market than there is in real estate, significantly more money. And it's quite obvious. The, um, the real estate market in the US, for example, is $3.7 trillion as of 2021. If you look at the 2021 data. And on the other hand, the stock market in the same period was $93 trillion. So a huge difference there. The housing market is just a fraction of the stock market. And if you look at the top 10 richest people in the world, there's not a single real estate person in that list. Um, all of them have invented something or are running some kind of business. The richest real estate investor is Shao Qi, a 91-year-old real estate magnate, uh, magnate from um, Hong Kong. And he's the 29th richest person in the world. And of course, he's not just an investor but he's um, a real estate developer that's based in Hong Kong. And the richest real estate developer in the US is Donald Bren, with a net worth of just $17 billion. So despite all the opportunities in the stock market, Buffett, uh, in the housing market, sorry, Buffett is aiming to take the best advantage of his time and skills. And that means that investing in the stock market is the best way to go about it. He's made over $100 billion in the stock market. So because of this, he has no real incentive to go over to real estate. What's made him so successful in the first place was his commitment to his strategies and principles. He doesn't invest in things that become hyped up. He sticks to the principles and that's how he's made his money. So that's the most important lesson we can learn from him. So of course, I'm not saying that investing in property is wrong. It, of course, can bring a lot of benefits, but as I've said, investing in the stock market is a better way to spend your time and money. Thank you for the video. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments below what you think.